the Raven Remastered. This was a game given to me from the developers. Um, it is across multiple platforms. I am obviously playing on Nintendo Switch. And um, the game does go for $29.99 USD. So we're going to go ahead and check this out. But I hope you all are having a fantastic day today. Hello, Terry. Welcome to the stream. Hope you are well today. I'm still trying to get over my cold, so. Not sure if you guys can hear that, so I'm going to probably turn up the sound in the game just a little bit. Hopefully that's a better sound for you all. Um, as you can see, I kind of started playing this. Well, at least I thought I did, but we're going to start a new game. Why not? Let's start a new game. Um, there are, looks like this is going to be an episodic game. This is chapter one. So. But yeah, I haven't been feeling well for the last few days, so. That's why I'm not doing cam, so. Raven's heir. <laughs> Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Yeah, Harold? I'm, I did turn it down a bit. I'm not sure if that helped, though. So if it's still a little loud, let me know. And I'll adjust in the game settings itself. Because that could be the issue, too. Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. Shh! Calm down. No. I'm a copper. We're on the same side. A copper? What are you doing here? And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off! He's gonna steal the eye. But... how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest!
Mm -mm. So far, it does look really good, though. I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. <laughs> You're funny, but you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. Mm. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, but my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise. Yeah, the music in this is really good. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. Hopefully the levels are pretty good and it's not too loud. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is, do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was, although I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. You do know, these days, there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support, Swiss police. But it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, Surely, I can be of assistance, somehow. I saw a safe being loaded. We have everything under control. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? 
Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. Then what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with bullets? You don't want to arouse attention. If you don't, but why not? There are enough police on this train as it is. If there were more, they'd only get in each other's way. I can assure you that I'd pack every seat in every carriage of this train with police, if it were a matter of deterrence. You're saying you don't want to scare off potential thieves? Ah, you're laying a trap. That would explain why it's just me, and not the army, that's panicked. All the same, I can't comment on your speculation. <laughs> your deductive powers leave much to be desired. I think we'll get along fine. You won't. You wow. won't. Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country. And I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do. Whether you like it or not. Not so bright, but stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zana. But this is my show, and I don't need you. But how do you know? It was rude. The rude much? Oh, hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa! It was him? Mm-hmm. Hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little... Yeah, it does have that claymation um, kind of style to it. Whether the uh, I agree. My help or that not, is not the game of the day. Let me change that. Uh, Maybe I, I forgot that I have it in that. change that I was going to drive me nuts because actually today I am playing the Raven Remastered and if time permits I might try to get a little bit of Sega Ages Outrun in maybe if I'm if I have enough time. Yes I need to know about the controls though. So examine an item on the next move the left stick use the right stick to select it and press A. Select the sandwich paper on the table. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich in the anyway. If you, let the, if you select the sandwich paper again, you'll see that the symbol display has changed and the text 
at the bottom of the screen says take the sandwich paper. Press A to pick it up. Very good. Now press Y. This opens the inventory in which you can see all the items that Constables and Zell Nair is carrying. Using the left stick to select the sandwich paper and press A so that it is displayed in the top left corner of the screen. Not Y. Wrap the apple core in the sandwich paper. Now you can use the sandwich paper with other items to select the apple core on the tape. Press A. Open the inventory again, select the sandwich paper, and press B to examine it. I wrapped the apple core in the sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making a mess of my trouser pocket. Still, I prefer not to have to carry them all day. Of course, you can also use the items inside the inventory with each other. Select the paper napkin with A, and then select sandwich paper in the inventory with A. That happened. The napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. A guilty pleasure. I don't need that either. Croissant. Let's get rid of it. Dump the litter from your inventory into the ashtray on Zelmir's table. Well, that is a... Okay. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. No need to ever leave your seat. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. Um. Oh, from the inventory. Okay, got it. That's interesting. That wasn't too hard, was it? And now you know everything you need to know right. about the game's controls. Okay, that was not nice. I was reading that. Violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. For one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. If I'm not mistaken, you're a violinist. That's true. A wonderful instrument. The violin music touches the soul. It does. That's why I learned to play it. Do you play in an orchestra? No, orchestras aren't really part of my world. A solo violinist. The best soloists travel a great deal and make a pile of money, or so they say. In that case, I'm probably not one of the best. Uh, where Are you traveling to Istanbul nonstop? No, I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at the reception in the Egyptian Museum. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake, is there cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. The violinist is a good-looking fellow, and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape in the world. For one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. The Vicarage in the Mirror, a detective novel by my favorite author, Lady Clarissa Westmacott. For years now, I 
I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her plays. The large map shows the different routes of the Orient Express. This train began in Paris and ends in Istanbul, as usual. Unfortunately, it will make most of its journey without me. This is the first car. The coal tender should be directly beyond this door, and in front of it, the engine. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh! oh. Pardon me! You spoke to him! No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr... Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? Do you teach at the Sorbonne? No, I work at the British Museum in London. You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the burglary two days ago? No, I wouldn't say that. Oh, no? Well, there was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, mm -hmm. let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> I don't know, he's suspicious. That's suspicious. I'll be like, if your museum something happened and you have no interest in it, then yeah, that's suspicious. Whatever you say. The famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine you know him. Uh, no. Should I? You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> well, why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. where you are going of course to venice i'm going to meet some colleagues there oh venice a beautiful city or so i'm told indeed but i really have to take my leave now just one more thing did you notice anything unusual on the train here on the train no i can't say that i have although i did spend most of the time in my compartment Yeah, you're a little suspicious. I don't want to take up any more of your valuable time, but you do understand, don't yeah. you? Yeah. That what concerns me is the present, and especially the robbery at the museum. Yeah, of course, of course. It's just, I'm in rather a hurry. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual, won't you, Professor? Of course, Constable. I don't trust this professor. And yeah, the voice acting is good in this. The door. I can't open it. What uh, do you mean you can't open it? We'll sort it out somehow. Uh -oh. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I Somebody got in there. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Maybe it's the steward or the little boy. He was missing. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right, just wait here. The little label on the door reads Baroness von Trebitz. Blue blood on the Orient Express. Yes, what is it? Whoever that is, James, ask them whether they found my purse and then closed the door. The noise on this train is driving me crazy. 
You're missing a purse. Was it stolen? At very least, I cannot find it, sir. It was stolen! When did you... When was the last time the Baroness saw her purse? What? In Zurich, on the platform, sir. I just asked where you last saw your purse. In Zurich, on the platform! James, tell him that I still had it when I got out to stretch my legs. The Baroness says... Maybe you lost it there. What? The Baroness never loses anything, sir. I never lose anything! Very well, then. I shall be on the lookout for your purse. If I might ask you a few questions about your fellow passengers. I thought he was looking for my purse. James, tell him to look for my purse. The Baroness wishes that you search for her purse. But couldn't we perhaps... <sighs> All right. First, the purse. I... I will have a look around. I have Thank a feeling you, that this guy stole her purse. <laughs> I don't know why. Because he was awfully pushy about getting back into um, his room. Don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Pardon me, but we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading the vicarage in the mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit writing? Impossible. I have all of your books. Your Detective Partu is my favorite character. Then I have bad news for you. I killed the old wretch off years ago. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my work, Constable. Oh, well, fine. Are you traveling to Istanbul, Lady Westmacott? No. We are on our way to Venice. From there, we will take a ship to Cairo. As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I fund a few excavations in Egypt. I traveled to Egypt by ship as a young woman. And now I'm doing it again as an old woman. I see. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in your novels, don't you? I solved the mystery of human nature a long time ago, Mr. Zellner. Since then, most people just bore me. Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young, but he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later, just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Yeah, the voice acting in this is pretty good. And I don't trust that archaeologist. I just don't. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. 
David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor or the baroness? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman who made his name when he caught the raven? I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, right. shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or will you, Constable? There's something else. A passenger's purse has gone missing. I suppose you haven't seen it. I'm sorry, Constable Zellner. As you know, I only deal with murder, not burglary. Have you asked my boy yet? Maddie is good at finding things. I'll go and do that now. As much as I like to keep talking, Duty calls. You were right. Madam? I did observe you as you came in. You seem so uh, eager. I... <laughs> it's been a long time since I've had a chance to prove myself, madam. And this is it. Your chance. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes, as my friend Ronald likes to say. I shall do my best. All righty. I think that archaeologist stole that old lady's, uh, the Baroness's purse. Oh, wait, something popped up. Uh, I don't know, maybe I can pick it up. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. The steward must have forgotten the toothpicks. Normally, he would offer them discreetly after dinner. Okay. An extraordinary woman, talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion, and that she's rather unhappy. We've already talked to her, so we don't really need to talk to her again. Okay, yeah, like, you don't look suspicious at all. No, of course not. I made the acquaintance of Dr. Gebhardt on the platform in Zurich. Mr. Zellner. Right, right. How can I help you? Tell me, did you notice anything suspicious here on the train or in Zurich? You mean, except for the fact that my suitcase was stolen on the platform? No. Is there any reason to be concerned? No, just routine. Constable Zellner, please don't think I'm naive. I spotted the inspector from Interpol. Legarde is his name, if I recall correctly. Legrand. If you say so. At the train station in Zurich, he put a cash box into the safe and then kept close watch as it was loaded onto the train. Don't tell me that a man at his pay grade routinely tramps across the Alps just to keep an eye on cash boxes. A cash box? Like the ones you'd find in safe deposit boxes? Precisely. And I believe we both have a good idea just what's inside. I do indeed have a theory, but what's yours? A ruby was stolen in London. One of the legendary Eyes of the Sphinx. The second jewel, an emerald, is rumored to be in a Swiss bank vault, if I remember correctly. Both jewels were supposed to be exhibited together in Cairo for the first time in 50 years. It does make one wonder. Indeed. Any news about the robbery in London? Quite something, wasn't it? It must have been professionals. The way they disabled one of the best security systems in the world. Most impressive. People were injured. 
One cannot execute a robbery on that scale without uh, collateral damage. It seems like the Raven has finally found a worthy successor. We can look forward to new and spectacular coups. I'm afraid I won't enjoy his exploits this time around if the new Raven is so reckless. That's your prerogative. May I borrow your newspaper? You can take the section with the article on the burglary. You're interested in that bit, aren't you? <laughs> you got me out. Here you go. Dankeschön. There's something else. Do you know where the conductor is? Hmm. I'd like to know that myself. I told him to search for my missing suitcase in Zurich. He hasn't got back to me yet. He's probably in cahoots with the thieves and didn't bother getting back on the train. If we don't crack down on vermin like them, the rabble will rule the world one day. Well, at the moment, we still don't know what really happened. He is not here doing his job. That's bad enough. I meant to ask, the Baroness is missing her purse. A Baroness? This train is really full of the creme de la creme. The Queen of Crime is over there, and now a Baroness as well. Have you seen the purse? Unfortunately, no. Do you know Lady Westmacott? You were talking to her. Well, I'm an admirer of her work. Like so many others. I once read in the newspaper that only Shakespeare and the Bible sell more copies than her crime novels. I read that too. She must be filthy rich. As a doctor, I'd have to work a thousand years to earn that kind of money. Auf Wiedersehen, Dr. Gebhardt. Goodbye, Constable. It was a pleasant chat, really. The game is pretty interesting so far, and I like these type of games, because it's like, I know it's an adventure game, but I do like these type of games, because it's story driven, and the story's pulling me in, so. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, the tunnels, no, I'll stay down here. I guess I can't. Because we did the saloon. Let's go into the I strongly front. suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Uh oh. Set the door down. The door was open, it wasn't locked. But I'm assuming that is the symbol for it saving. Gun down, Robert. Yeah, Robert. Put the if gun I down. may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. This is the revered Constable Zelman of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. I hope you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked, and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. I guess I can mention the purse about the Baroness, too. And then there's the Baroness. She's missing her purse. Baroness von Trebitz. Interesting. Indeed, sir. But it has nothing to do with our case. So I shouldn't concern myself with the matter? Ah, uh, why not? 
It's your job as a policeman. But don't expect me to be particularly interested in a lost purse. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bake my trap then? With an eye? An eye on its way from Zurich to Cairo? <laughs> someone has done his homework. Mm. Well done, Kempster. What do you know of this raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Rob, we don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? It could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zellner? Yes? Don't bother us, unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exact a moment. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. It's interesting, because the raven kind of reminds me a little bit of this anime I was watching. Um, it's a spin-off anime from the series Case Clothes, and I don't know if it actually had any more seasons. But it was a pretty good investigation on behalf of a grant that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. Hmm. A box with a padlock. I suppose it contains tools for the train's crew, maybe for coupling and uncoupling the cars. At any rate, it's positioned so that it's easier to reach from the ground than from up here. Have you gone mad? I'll shoot. Hey, my pistol. You'll get it back in Venice. I could have fallen under the wheels. I thought you were a ghost. Ghosts don't exist. They do too. Once you flew past the window. Yes, yes, sure. All now right. get moving. Oh. Scotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. The mm. taste of them. Maybe if I just suck it. <laughs> Aww. Wait, go back, go back. Oh, uh, Constable? Dang. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, My son didn't make any trouble for you, I hope. It's just that he just blindly. walked past us, silent and seething. That's usually a sign that someone's laid down the law. I'm afraid so. He played a trick on me, a rather dangerous one. The lad left me no choice but to take away his wooden pistol as a punishment. I understand. And thank you. Maddie is a very lively child. Sometimes he needs a strong fatherly hand. Uh -oh. Where's Matt's father, if I may ask? He's... he's gone. Ah, I understand. Could you, uh, leave Maddie's pistol here, perhaps? So you don't have to bother with it? Of course. I told him he wouldn't get it back until Venice. Very well. Thank you again, Constable. Maybe I can find I suppose the key the here. steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. Hmm. 
pad on which the steward writes orders. Empty. Maybe he didn't use it because there's not much to do today. But, wait a minute. He said he didn't use it, but at the same time, didn't the archaeologist tell him that he was waiting? No, I think he just said he was waiting for the steward to um, bring him a key. But I thought the writer told him that he was sitting there for a cup of tea. So was this, I wonder if the steward, stewardess was there then. Examine the scissors. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard to open packages. These days nearly We're everything is sealed up tight. A colleague recently told me about dried powdered soup in small bags. I couldn't believe it. A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have become in the last 10 years. And maybe we can give Maddie some candy and he might be able to tell us something. quite unprofessional but on the other hand hello Matt oh come on are you going to be angry with me for the rest of the trip until I get my pistol back I gave it to your mother oh man couldn't you have just raked me over the coals would you have learned anything from that I didn't learn anything from this either. Would you like a butterscotch? You think you can bribe me? I have no reason to. You made trouble and got punished for it. Take it as a peace offering. Just four? If I'm faster than you, there'll only be three. Hey! Friends again? Mm-hmm. All right, then. And no dangerous nonsense anymore. Okay. is Lady Westmacott's companion, correct? Yeah, but it's not like you think. At first I thought, boy, you must be really wicked if you need to pay for friends. But the lady's really okay. A bit odd and really old. But other than that, she's great. She likes me. The lady has peculiar taste. Hey! You and your mother, do you both live on Lady Westmacott's estate? I'm only there for the holidays. Most of the time I'm at boarding school. I imagine that's not very pleasant. No, it's fine. I have friends there. You always have to be so quiet in the ladies' house. And I'm not allowed to bring any friends. Such a big house with so many places to hide. And no one to play hide and seek with. You said it. And how long has your mother worked for the lady? Two years. And your father? What does he do? He stayed home. I used to go fishing with him, and hunting. He even let me shoot a real gun. And then? Then Mom fought with him, and 
he left. I was seven. Oh, and uh, how old are you now? In eight months, I'll be nine years old. And do you already know what you want to be when you grow up? A burglar? <laughs> no, we'll see. Maybe an actor. Really? Well, I don't know. You need a lot of talent for that. I'm an actor in a theater group, you know? You are? Oh, yes. And I'm one of the best in our group, if I may say so. I get really deep into my roles, you know? I don't just talk like the character. I think like him. I become him. It's the only way to... <coughs> Matt, are you okay? <coughs> I well, think you be you're good at copying things to be an actor. That... That wasn't bad. Disturbing, but not bad. The Baroness in the second compartment over there is missing her purse. Do you have any idea where it could be? <laughs> Do I ever? Hmm? That guy over there with the violin case? What about him? He picked up something in Zurich put it in his violin case. Oh, really? wow. Yeah, and he made sure that nobody saw him. But you saw him. Uh-huh. Did you also see what it was? Nah, not really. But now that I think of it, it must have been the Baroness's purse. I should look into it, shouldn't I? I think so. I'm gonna ask about the steward while I'm over here. Tell me, have you seen the steward anywhere? Mm, no. He was walking around a little while ago, though. Hopefully they didn't forget him in Zurich. <laughs> What's he supposed to do? I'm looking for a key to open a compartment door. Did you check his things behind the counter? I'm sure the drawers will be locked. Can't you break it open? Or pick the lock like the raven? Perhaps. But I'd need a piece of wire or something like that. Ask my mom. She has a lot of hairpins. Okay. She doesn't like the wind messing up her hair. Hmm. Thanks for the tip. So long. So, so it was good that we talked to him and gave him the butterscotches. Okay, so we're gonna go back. We're gonna talk to this guy in the violin case. He better had his purse, and then I gotta go talk to his mom, and then probably go and get the key. Okay. The violin case looks pretty old, but that doesn't say anything about the quality of the violin. The best violins are often in the oldest cases. Excuse me, sir. A passenger is missing her purse. Perhaps it was stolen. Really? Someone saw you with your violin case on the platform in Zurich. What's the meaning of this? I didn't steal anything. Nobody said you did. I just wanted to ask you whether you might have noticed anything on the platform. Ah. Well. Why did you think I was accusing you? Well. Because you mentioned my violin case in the context uh -huh, of the he took it. Apropos, may I have a look at your violin? If he say no, it he must took be it. a very extraordinary piece. Oh, that's, uh, that's not possible. It's a genuine Guarneri. Very valuable. Very. And also very sensible. What could harm it here? Light? Air? It took the purse. May I ask you to open the violin case? No, you may not. I'm not guilty of anything. I'm afraid I have to insist. Then I'm afraid you need a warrant. I will not stand back and let you rifle through my belongings. <sighs> I wonder if I can get a Thanks. the inspector to... Okay, so let's go talk to... What you call it? Maddie's mom. The controls are a little stiff. Um, but I'm playing with a wired controller, so that could be the reason why, but they are a little stiff. Oh, okay. Oh, the new Carmen San Diego show, because I was like, huh, what Carmen show? <laughs> I had to think. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut out for her with Matt, and a difficult bus from what they say. 
Mrs. Miller? Yes? Uh, please excuse my unusual request, but Matt said you have some hairpins. Could I borrow one? One of my hairpins? It's a long story. It would be a big help. Well, if you really need one. Go ahead, Mary. The constable won't do us any harm. Will you, Mr. Zellner? Of course not, madam. Yeah, you're about to pick a lot. Is this one okay? It'll do nicely, madam. How very kind of you. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Oh, I'm afraid not. I was totally focused on my work. She's always got an awful lot to do, my Mary. You have to tell me if that's not all right with you. Good lord, child. Knit as much as you want. So, nothing out of the ordinary? No, Constable. Goodbye, Mrs. Miller. Goodbye, Constable. Okay, now I see that open the drawer popped up, so... I need a bit of wire or something like that okay, to pick the lock. Okay, I forgot. Go to the inventory. Grab the hairpin. Pick and the lock. And suddenly, it's me who's the thief on the train. Whoops. That was easier than expected. Hmm. Batteries, a toothbrush, a shaving brush. Not huh, the, the key compartment, to a compartment door, door. Key wasn't just there. this one. Hmm. Too small for the door, but it might still be useful. Oh, okay, I know where that goes to. Okay, so we got another key. I know where that goes to. That goes to that little padded box outside. Maybe the key's in there. That would be an odd place to put the key, but okay, I'll bite. But I, I just think it would be odd to put the key in there. box is secured with a padlock. I won't be able to open it without a key. Maybe, I'm thinking maybe the key might be in here. That's it. There we go. This should help. if he could take that novel to the lady and have her autograph it. I don't know if that's going to do anything, but we'll see. And I think my man got that, uh, I probably should have tried to talk to old dude again. Lady Westmacott. Yes. I uh, was wondering if you might sign your book, Constable Zelda. If it isn't too much of an inconvenience. Of course it's an inconvenience, but only a small one. Aww. That was nice of her. She could have told him, uh, no, get the hell out of my face. But she You're did. welcome. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Okay. I will probably stop playing this in about the next eight minutes. And then for the last 15 minutes, I'm going to play a little bit of Sega Ages Outrun. So. And he won't let me in there. So. So kind as to close the window. 
No, I'd like some fresh air, but I don't want to catch a cold. Oh, what if it makes him get up? You're not alone on this train. I want the window open. Swiss politeness doesn't seem to be what it used to be. I'm not going to catch a cold because of you. Go somewhere else if you don't like it. I wonder. That makes no sense. The violinist would close the window immediately, and I wouldn't have enough time to search his violin case. Easily lock the compartment door from inside by turning a little knob. But I didn't lock it. Professor, if you had locked the door from in there, you wouldn't be out here. Uh, that's true. I don't believe that it's no use. The bolt is too short to get a good grip on it. I wonder, can I use the pliers? Well, we had two pig. I don't know if that'll work. But we had pliers. Maybe we can open I it. I bet I could really get a grip on the bolt with these. Well, come on then, hurry up. Yeah, that might do the trick. I barely left the window ajar. Uh, nothing to see. Oh, well, <laughs> that happened. Ah, oh. are you okay? Hmm? Yes, fine. Do you have any idea why the door was locked? I don't know. Or maybe the constant vibrations caused the lock to lock itself. You can't possibly believe that. Right. Well, then what's your theory? The conductor could have locked it from the outside. On the other hand, it could have been someone here in the compartment who locked the door from the inside. Who? And where have they gone? They could have climbed out there. Who would be that insane? You tell me, Professor. So, what are you hiding? Back. What do you have that would be worth stealing? No, nothing. No valuables? Certainly not. <laughs> not on my salary. Huh. It was enough for a first-class compartment on a luxury train. That's my business. You're playing a dangerous game, Professor Lucien. I'd like to look around a bit. Of course. Hmm. Assuming there really was someone in the compartment, and he climbed out the window, where's he gone? Wow, you have a very nice fountain pen. Privacy. If you'd managed to decode hieroglyphics that boggled the best minds of the last 3,000 years, you'd have received a gift like that as well. Hmm. No, nothing interesting. Bible, Grimm's fairy tales, Moby Dick, and gin, whiskey, and rum. All classics. I really wonder what the professor is hiding from me. But I can't just rifle through the luggage of innocent citizens. This is the 60s. What's this? It's a button. From a suit or a uniform, I guess. The burglar might have lost it. Maybe, or maybe not. If I notice anyone with a missing button on his jacket, I'll ask him about it. But I wouldn't get my hopes up. 
If there was a burglar, he climbed out the window and jumped off the train. Goodbye, Professor. Goodbye. Okay. So I'm gonna go back and talk to the guy on the freight car. Uh, I know I said I would stop playing in the next couple of minutes, but I'm gonna keep going. And I'll use the other game to kind of like relax like for a bit, but... I'm gonna go talk to this guy, because maybe he can get me some type of paperwork or something so I can search that violin case. Pardon me, sir. We could have used you a few minutes ago. Wait, that's kind of suspicious. Like, where was you at with all the good stuff was going on, though? Like, for real. Like, you just, like, like, dipped out. Inspector Legrand, anything to report? I got Professor Lucien into his compartment using a pair of pliers. Did you notice anything inside the compartment? The window was open. Someone could have climbed out. And the professor? Acted suspiciously. He rummaged around in his leather bag. And? He seemed to have found what he was searching for. Good. Good work. Now, perhaps you could give me some information. All right. We should. What? Uh-oh. The light's gone Going out. Going down. Flashlights. Ah, get off me. There, sir. An envelope. Oh, he struck. My dear Nico, you should take a closer look at the box. Ah, what the dickens? It's, it's a away with it. Take cover. The man just blew up the back of half of this train. What the what? Well, that happened. <coughs> oh, dear. Oh. Is everyone all right? Are you hurt? Quick thinking. Well done, Selma. <coughs> I think the tunnel collapsed. Then he's trapped. Hurry, we have to lock the second exit. Sir, there's a fire up ahead. The engine's burning. It's a distraction. Oh, okay. Hurry, block the exit. But, sir... <coughs> the fire will consume all the oxygen. He's right, Inspector. A fire in a narrow tunnel is extremely dangerous. Merde. Go to the front of the train, find the engineer, and tell him to move the train out of the tunnel. Yes, sir. Are you ready? 
You have to uncouple the freight car. You understand? <coughs> I understand. I'll see to the passengers. They should all wait in the tunnel. We'll check each one in turn as they go out. Let's get to it. Alrighty. I think that's probably a good stopping point for this. I may actually continue playing this though, because it's only one chapter. But I do um, I have a time limit in which I do want to stop. But again, uh, this is the Raven Remastered. It is available on the um, Nintendo Switch. I'm just trying to see if it's saved. Okay. It auto saved and trapped and stopped. Okay. But this is available on the Nintendo Switch PC, uh, Mac OS, if I'm not mistaken. And there is, I want to say, PlayStation. Four. If not PlayStation 4, it might be Xbox One. Uh, but if you like what you see of the Raven Remastered so far, um, it is going for $29.99. Um, and you can definitely pick it up as it released on the 22nd of this month. Um, I will be playing more of this. This will now be my game to play on my Nintendo Switch days. So we will be playing more of this next week. <laughs> 